welcome friends do it sir hi roger i, do, I was yeah, so, so very kind I, I was I, writing sir. a message to you, Luis. How, uh, how, uh, Professor Savoycar? Everything okay? Nice yeah, to fine, see fine, you sir. all. Yes. Very, ple yes, very, mm -hmm. a great pleasure, Roger. I'm very e emotioned by you being the the mellow lecturer. Very, very touchy. If you are emotioned, what well, I am now? I'm uh, more than uh, Professor Savoycar. <laughs> we are yes. we are very good friends, yes, me sir. and Roger. Yes. We address to each other as oh, my yes. brother. Yeah, so correct. the family is oh. giving the lecture today also. I also refer to him as my brother, Roger. Yes, yes, my brother. I just sent you a message, by the way. You were saying hello <laughs> on WhatsApp, and I said, uh, hello, my brother, I've just joined the meeting. And then it's I saw still it, 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 It's still dawn here. The sun hasn't rose. It's beautiful night, Roger. The planets oh. are... It's, it's, it's the Via Lactea is beautiful. All the planets are giving you good wishes. So uh, thank you. I need them. Perhaps <laughs> tell me, uh, tell me, Louis. So uh, it's around uh, five forty in your country, no? It's it's five thir uh, five forty exactly. Yeah, yeah, and it's winter time. That means yes, you're it's still winter in the time. It's going to, you're still it's, in the dark. Yes, you're still. In yeah, the dark. sunrise is going to be at around six. Yeah. But it's worth, it's worth, not only because of your lecture, but because of the beautiful sky with all the, the stars and planets. Yeah, thank you for, for the comparison, but uh, you're too kind. <laughs> when, we, when we are among stars, right, Professor savoy -Caro? You are one, one more yes, star, Roger. Oh, I don't believe in, I don't believe this word at all, <laughs> at all. <laughs> I was I was thinking of your father again and uh, speaking of the giant. These people, and especially your father and others of that generation, were giants. Today, I don't know what we're doing. We, are, I don't think we we in French. I don't know if you say that in English. On uh, arrive pas We we don't we don't reach the the uh, the winkle. We don't reach the the uh, the foot. I would say the top yeah, of yeah. the foot. Oh, Roger, let Professor Savoy yeah. card. Um, yes. I am yes, sir. starting to put together a project to have a book yes. on the biography of Victor, uh, yes, which sir. is going to be... Poor, but... Uh, uh, people that, uh, uh, you know, are friends of Victor. I'm putting together this project. Hopefully next, it's the so Mellow nice. Blue Lecture will be able to, to have it ready on a digital form. Let's see. Yes, sir. So it's a pity I didn't have the occasion to to see India again, I've been five, six times in India. It's always fascinating for me. And I don't know Goa, by the way. I don't know Goa. Yeah. yeah. It's a lovely place. Sometimes. Yeah, it's nice to come in the month of December or so. Little crowded, but it's pleasant sure weather in that. December. Yeah, Christmas time. I'm sure of that, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Rajasthan, to the north. I've been in uh, Kerala. I've been to uh, yeah. to uh, uh, other place in central India, but never to Goa. Yeah, Bangalore. Yes, okay. but never to never to Goa. Yeah. yeah. Luis, how are you, my brother? All fine, all fine, Roger. And the family. Uh, all the family. And all the family. I was, I was family, family is good. Um, yeah. uh, you know, living living in the in the countryside in the mountains. Good. Uh, yeah. It's it, it's quality of life, right? It's very nice. Yeah. Are you there uh, now? Yes. Yeah. I'm here, but uh, one of the drawbacks is the fact that I get to see uh, not as frequently the granddaughters and that type mm -hmm. of thing, but. It's always a trade-off, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So uh, I don't know. We are more or less in the same situation. Very, very, very most, more often than ever, go to the countries at home. It started two years ago because of the of uh, what you imagine the pandemic, etc. But now I'm uh, at this moment. I'm in uh, in Paris. I'm in Paris in, in the flat. In are Paris. you are you in Paris? Uh, take yes. a look. Take a look at your mobile. I sent you a message. <laughs> okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> I'll do my best. Yeah. No, I'm putting together this thing, you know, because I thought, Jesus, I need to have something for the next generation. The, the time capsule project yes. uh, of the International Society led me to see how important it is to have this type of memory, you know. That's correct, for yes. For the younger people to know who the guys were. Yeah. Speaking about the time capsule, uh, my uh, interview as uh, one of the former uh, presidents uh, uh, was about international collaboration. I don't want to speak on my research work and things like that. So please, if you go to the time capsule and go to part B, which is devoted to the former presidents, but right. you know that because you 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 yeah, have to I, I, for you. I, I prepared the 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 the, 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 the Testimony on victory, yeah. Correct. Uh, is it ready yet? Yes, it's the. Oh, well, I sent it's it uploaded. To, I sent it to the, our good old friend Pedro. I don't know he, if it is uploaded. Okay, I'll check that. Whatever. If you go in part B, uh, if you scroll down, uh, you've got all the past presidents, and then you will see me, and you can uh, you can listen to I will, the. I'll, I'll check it on, Roger. Do you, you can... know? Do you know Ian Martins? Ian Martins, who is in the video there. Is a good friend from Copy from Rio. Yes, yes, I remember him. Yes, of course. Remember, yes. you remember, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, he's in the dark at this moment because it's 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 well, not daytime yet. It's dark, <laughs> it's dark where I am. It's dark in Rio, also. It couldn't yeah, be yeah. different. <laughs> so to speak about the time capsule, you will see my my video. It's a kind of interview. I wanted an interview. It's all together 38 minutes about okay. international collaboration, uh, citizens of the world. I'll take, I'll take a look. Who conducted the interview? Well, the the, the the project team. In fact, the four of them. So they they switch from one question to the other. I mean, there are different questions. They ask questions, and they uh, each of the members uh, asks a question. The guy who is really, um, uh, I would say, uh, chairing the session is uh, Emilio uh, Bigliotta from uh, Naples. I see. He's a member of the team. He's a, he's a very nice guy, uh, Italian guy. He's a nice guy. Uh, yeah. But also, of course, uh, Sukumar is there. There is a Chinese lady working in Ireland now. Uh, what's her name? Ceres. Uh, and then there is Charles uh, Mac, uh, Mac Robert from South Africa. The four I of them. See. So I they see. are the team. They are the team who made everything. I mean, made everything. Then they use people like me, like Pedro, like you to, to, of course, to fill up the. the all the the contents of the of the of the time capsule. So go on the part B. You can see you go to the International Society. You click on time capsule. I think there is a there is how you say there is a thing there, and uh, then you go to part B, and uh, you will check also if your your thing is there because before uh, you scroll down and before reaching me, you will reach Victor de Melo first, of course. I'll try, Roger, because. I, I don't go often to the website of the International Society. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> same for me. To tell you the truth. <laughs> yes, that's same for me, yes. But I'll, I'll surely do. And um, uh, uh, I, imagine, I imagine there are contributions from all presidents, right? Uh, from who? On all, on all ex-presidents. Yes, it, it, this was a, this was a program. I don't know what is filled in yet. Uh, there is a very nice uh, PowerPoint show uh, with comments uh, about the uh, Jean Kirizel by the grandson of Jean Kirizel by Thierry uh, Thierry. Uh, forget his last name. Uh, he's a grandson, but through the through the through the sister of. Uh, to the, to the daughter of Jean Kirizel, so he doesn't have the same name. Uh, and this, uh, is, uh, he gives the history of Jean Kirizel, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. So 
So you've got three people to to watch. <laughs> you've got to watch Victor De Milo, of course. You've got to watch Jean Kirizel. And if you have more time about for philosophy, look at Roger Frank and international. No, I'll, I'll look. I'll look Roger Frank. I'm interested on in that. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. This is Professor Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Good morning, wherever we are. Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon to you in India. Good afternoon to you in India, of course. So, welcome to all of you from Indian Geotechnical Society side. Hello, good afternoon, Professor Babu. Yeah, how are you, Professor Samadhya? Uh, welcome, Hi. Professor Roger Frank, for the. Thank you, Professor Babu. How are you? Good to see you again, say. <laughs> so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure that you accepted our invitation and giving the lecture. Yeah. Well, the honor and the pleasure is for me, are for me, you know, of course. Hello, how are you? Fine. How are you, Professor Babu? So nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Are you are you are you in the United States? No, no, no. I'm in India. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Everything good in your in your part uh, in Bangalore? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Bangalore is always weather is good. Good. Good morning, everybody. I hope Professor Mada will be able to join us, but he's, uh, he's in the U.S., so probably um, it's really earlier, even earlier than Brazil. Right. It was a great pleasure to, to, to work with him uh, uh, when we were on the board, both of us. He was uh, the vice president for Asia. At the time, I was the vice president for Europe then, yes. It was in the in the term that Valdemar Hashishi was from South America, right? Mm, let me think about that. My problem is I've been four for four mandates on the board, so I confuse them. I've been sixteen years on the board. Uh, first for Europe, then uh, appointed member, then uh, president, and then past president. Sixteen years altogether. So let me remember. Um, uh, Europe was 2005 to 2009. Yeah, most likely, because then uh, we had somebody from... Uh, oh, my God. Uh, Argentina. Then you had Argentina. Uh, well, we, we've got... Uh, we had uh, Alejo Friso not long ago. Yeah. You had Terzario and then Friso, right? Yeah, but in the meantime, we had Jarbas. In the middle was Jarbas, correct. Yeah. So during your terms, you had Valdemar, Jarbas, Friso, and Terzario. Yeah, during my four terms, yes. Yeah. Terzario, yes, yes. But oh, oh, Roger, Valdemar is going through difficult times. Yeah. Uh, give, send him uh, a message or phone him. He will love to hear you, but he's having health difficulties. Ah. Ah, merde, as we say in French. Yeah, so harsh. Very, very difficult. It was his birthday um, Wednesday. No, Thursday. It was his birthday, the day before yesterday. Um, and um, he's okay. But he's going through very difficult times. But how old is he now? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. But like, like me, 
He's young, young. yeah. this uh, expectation before the time arrives right uh, or the the proper time of the program arrives yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's nice i see all the people coming in the names appear when they join in but i don't have yes. a general view of uh, we're 23 at this I moment. Think, I think a lot of people that comes in don't have uh, um, authorization to either to speak or to uh, have the cameras on, uh, uh, Roger. Ah. Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon. Yes, I should say good afternoon, right? Good to correct me, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we have to say both. It's funny because in French, uh, say uh, we say bonjour, but people will say that any time of the day, which is weird. I don't say bonjour, good day, uh, when it's after I don't know what time, I say bonsoir, good evening. Bonjour, I, bonsoir, I, but uh, it's... it's I, I know what you mean because it's so confusing. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> good night, you should all, all only say when people are getting ready to go to sleep, right? To go to. And uh, if you know them, if you know them well, uh, otherwise if, you say good evening. I, yes. if, if, if you meet someone at, at uh, 11 p.m., what do you say? Well, you, if you don't know the person very well in French, you will say good evening. <laughs> You won't say good night. It means go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you should wish him. <laughs> yes, it doesn't work in a way, even. Though, yeah. In Portuguese, we don't have a difference. Um, good night is if you meet a person at 7 p.m. for leisure, or if you are going to bed and you say for so long to anyone. Both are good noite. Boa noite. But noite, uh, even in the evening. Even in the evening, even at 7 p.m., if I go to your house for dinner, yeah. when I join you, I say, Boa noite, Roger. Okay, uh, your, your bed is ready. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> should be ready. <laughs> so you know our home in uh, the countryside, of course, I remember of course. that. But yeah. you, know the, you know the fat in Paris as well? If it is the same one, once you you hosted me there, I stayed uh, five days in your flat. Remember, you moved oh, up to stay with uh, not with Dimitri. I think you went to stay with your daughter. Okay, yes, so it's the same flat. Yes, yes, it's the same you, flat. And you lent me, uh, uh, Cisa and myself, your flat. Oh, anyhow, I'm in this flat in 1987, as we met in 1989, I think, really. So it's clear, yeah. Then you hosted um, uh, Maria, my daughter. Yes, I, oh yes, I remember. I was she. She's so sweet. She's, she's so fine. Sweet. She's fine. Yes. She's so sweet. Yeah. Good afternoon.
I'll be back in a second. I need to go somewhere. I'll be back in a okay. second. Okay. So shall we start or wait for five minutes for more people to join? You decide. Fine, we'll make no problem. I think, Bodhanand, we can uh, stick to our timings. Others will join. Yeah. Yeah. OK, we'll start, I think, sir. Yeah. Samadhya, sir. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we can so start. start no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Good, good afternoon. morning, because I think our people, our delegates are at various time zones. I think in uh, Brazil it yes. will be early morning, maybe six a.m. or so. Uh, and uh, I think in uh, once it will be uh, around eleven, eleven thirty. So we are here in different time zone and welcome one and all for fifth Dr. Victor De Belo Goa lecture. We are very kind enough to Professor Louis and the team for inviting us to conduct this Victor Demolo lecture every year. Since 2017, we started this uh, Victor Demolo Goa lecture through our IGS uh, Goa chapter. So we are uh, so uh, basically I should not forget the efforts of Professor Shivkumar Babu sir in starting this lecture. Uh, Brazilian Society, Brazilian, Brazilian Society. Portuguese Geotechnical Society for permitting us and supporting us to conduct, allow this lecture to be conducted every year without any interruption. And they are also kind enough to publish every lecture as a journal paper, the National Journal of Soils and Rocks. And all these lectures, along with photographs and paper, they are available on the website also. So this lecture also will be recorded and it will be, will be placed on Dr. Victor Tebolo website. I welcome one and all for this fifth edition of the Victor de Bello lecture and I welcome our uh, fifth lecturer, Professor Roger Frank from France. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation at very short notice. I know in this COVID pandemic, uh, all the things are happening in such a pace. Uh, everybody is that difficult, all are cooperating very nicely and we can have such nice lectures happening in a short span of time. Uh, we are extremely sorry for sir giving you trouble uh, at this stage. You are kind enough to accept our invitation and deliver the lecture. So I welcome you, sir, and I welcome all delegates from different parts of the world to this fifth vector demo logo lecture. The request of Professor G. Gupta, head of the Department of Indian College, uh, to say a few words. Thank you, thank you, Kudanan. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, respectively, the guests wherever they are. 
it is my pleasure that goa engineering college is organizing this particular program victor dimelo lecture series it has become a popular series amongst most of the geotechnical engineers who are around goa and also the world and we invite always the known uh, personalities who are known in the field and that is uh, the best part of this particular uh, event uh welcome sir professor uh, roger uh, roger sir uh it is once again my pleasure to invite you to goa engineering college although we could not invite you personally here but we are lucky enough and we are uh, really pleased to listen to you today and 5 years back this victor dimelo lecture it was started by professor purnanand savaikar and every year it has gained its importance and we bring international faculty and professors and experts for this program i should appreciate here professor babu's contribution and he told me uh, when i met him in bangalore that uh, professor punarand is the right person you have an asset to this college and he will continue this and uh, i must appreciate here the efforts put by professor punarand and also uh, if i remember very well uh sometime back maybe 2011 also uh, professor uh, dimelos uh, victor dimelos brother brother no purnan our brother in law who is in goa he is related yeah. he is related he came and he discussed yeah. with me and it could materialize only after professor purnan joined this college and we thought of giving respect and today he he is lecture series means it means a lot for all of us and uh, i don't want to take much time once again i thank professor purnanand and all the dignitaries who are who have joined and once again i welcome professor uh, roger thank you thank you good day thank you sir thank you gupta sir uh, now i request our president of indian geotechnical society professor samadhiya sir to say a few words हेलो प्रोफेसर समाधि सर सर योर माइक्रोफोन इज ऑफ आई थिंक ओह सॉरी थैंक यू प्रोफेसर पूर्णानंद एंड गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड इट्स माय प्लेजर टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस uh go uh, dr victor demelo who a lecture series and this is the fifth lecture which will be delivered by professor roger frank a known personality in uh, international geotechnical society uh, society you can say okay he was the president of international society for soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering so thank you uh, professor roger frank for thank you uh, joining for this lecture and i am sure that uh, all of us uh, will be benefited those who are attending this uh, particular lecture by uh, your lecture your experience which will be uh, given in the, that particular lecture uh, i am also thankful to uh, dr melo professor babu who were actually the persons behind uh, this particular lecture series and also the effort of uh, professor uh, sevaikar now indian geotechnical society as you know everybody knows it it has become uh, a popular society a vibrant society in india especially in uh, uh, other disciplines of geo, uh, civil engineering so in civil engineering this is the most popular society and it has become popular because of the efforts put in by our predecessors including professor babu is there professor madho and we are uh, we are doing nothing but uh, following the footsteps of uh, all these stalwarts of indian geotechnical society and also uh, with the brazilian society Uh, we have organized one activity in uh, last june 
June 21 from 16 to 18. And also, uh, an MOU was signed between India and the Brazilian society. So we are looking forward to have many more interactions. Although in the last one year, we could have only one, but uh, uh, I'm sure that in coming future, we will be organizing few activities along with the Brazilian society also. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and I wish that this lecture will be a great success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I request Professor Babu sir to say a few words because with his blessings only yeah. this program started. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, good afternoon and thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Am I already good? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, yes, uh, yes, a uh, very hearty welcome to Professor Roger Frank uh, for accepting our invitation. And uh, Dr. Luis uh, Dimelo, who has been a very, very close friend of uh, all of us uh, for facilitating this lecture. I'm sure that uh, the talk itself is so interesting. I know we have very good uh, audience already. I think, with, uh, I think we should start the lecture. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Vishal was a really a legendary personality. Uh, for just a few minutes, I will just uh, 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 present about his uh, details, uh, little details, so that at least the new generation should know how Victor Demiro and what are his works in a small presentation. Are the slides visible? Hello? Yes. Is the slide visible? Yes. 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 This is a small biosketch I prepared based on Berlin's uh, lecture which was compiled somewhere in 2008, which briefly shows about the, uh, the greatness of legendary personality Victor de Mello. As everybody knows, Victor de Mello was born in Panji, Goa on May 14th, 1926. Uh, uh, that is uh, here Victor de Mello with his uh, siblings here in this picture. He attended his boarding school in India and then moved to Boston in 1944. He obtained his BSc and MSc in 1946 and his doctoral degree in 1948 at MIT in the US. Then he immigrated to Brazil in 1949 uh, to the Brazilian. So these are his uh, some some of the photographs at Bishop Cotton School in Bangalore and then at MIT after this deal. Then he joined the Hydroelectric Power of Light and Power Company at Sao Paulo, Brazil in 49. In 1951, he joined Geotechnica, a geotechnical engineering services design and construction company. And he returned to MIT in 1966, 67 as a senior visiting professor. In addition to that, he was president of the Brazilian Society of soil mechanics of which he was founding member. He was the first recipient of the Azaghi Prize, Vice President of International Society of Latin America and Vice President of International Society for Soil Mechanics in Latin America. Then he started his career as an individual consultant. His main contributions uh, in the field of uh, civil engineering, uh, dam engineering, earth moving, tunnels and underground work, deep urban and port block excavations, foundation for high drive building, bridges, industries, ports, jetties, breakwaters, highways, rail roads, and so on. There are many other things, but I could list only a few of them. He was a panel member in a number of sessions. He presented his classic 1971 state of art report on standard penetration test, presented several lectures at international level, especially in the problem of earth dam. Uh, engineering in Brazil and other countries. He spoke of for the dangers of over reliance in indirect indicators of soil properties as deduced from deep sounding static cone penetrometer with friction sleeves. He described the evolution of his experiences of design and construction of over 50 major dams in Brazil and elsewhere in Latin America uh, using residual soils and satellites in particular. He delivered a keynote address in the 6th Regional Conference where his keywords were the primordial presidents of values. Human being is first, engineer second, 
and special is he also said that if a geologist declared that at a given site the joint strikes unfavorably in an upstream down downstream direction and tend to open over significant depth and therefore the site should be abandoned as a civil engineer i would say accept the first part of the statement as information comes from the appropriate source change it to so what to the point of requiring and achieving some quantification and as regards the concluding affirmative do not hesitate to say to tor ultra crappy dam the consequences and the decision are part of an overall civil engineering optimization and should be sources good and good he also presented the case of the paraibunar dam which has been designed based on local uh, experience This is a is the seventies the very popular seventeenth Rankine lecture he delivered in nineteen seventy seven in UK. So in this lecture he said our ability to predict what will happen is poor compared to our ability what to will predict not what happen. His fire design principles, which he always uh, uh, supported, were robustness, change the problem, redundant. observational control and ask what if this is one of the river tunnel project uh, which we has handled uh, this is uh, regarding uh, foundations for uh, leaning tower at pisa normally whenever we have problems we try to find one solution but victor sir has given 25 different solution out of which four are seen in the problem so such was his greatness of this great scholar He developed a philosophy for foundation design that incorporated both common sense and sound theory. Uh, then he used to always say the use of traditional bank capsule theory to estimate ultimate load uh, capsule of the foundations. The commonly used method for estimating ultimate shaft friction of the piles in clay is always not reliable. And he used to say, "I submit that most important question facing the geotechnical engineer." is for him to reassume a position as a foundation instrument of every civil engineering orchestra and for the civil engineer himself to reassume his position as most influential element of human society in affecting the environment so this one is uh, some of photographs uh, and this was in brief a uh, presentation on victor de melo so nobody can uh, present victor de melo uh, his qualities his experience uh, all his uh, characters nobody can display in any words or any research papers so i will not take much time this man uh, luis de melo to say a few words well good uh, good afternoon to all in india uh, good morning to roger specifically good morning to all colleagues uh, joining us from brazil from portugal uh, or el elsewhere in the world uh, it's a pleasure to be here once again uh, together with the indian uh, geotechnical community specifically the goa chapter who hosted me so nicely when i delivered my lecture it's a pleasure to be here i'm sure we will have Um, explained lecture by professor roger frank with uh, very interesting information i have had the privilege of already reading the technical paper very interesting uh, technical aspects are going to be brought by uh, professor frank and um, i'm eager to listen to it so i i pass the word back to professor savoyka <coughs> yeah thank you very much for your kind words so we had a first lecture by professor mr madhav in 2017 followed by a lecture by uh, luis de melo in 2018 then professor pedro pinto from portugal delivered the third lecture in 2019 and all these lectures were uh, held in goa in offline mode and only in 2021 last year the presentation because of covid the lecture was uh, delivered by balasubramanyam sir from, from griffith university australia it was in online mode and this year also so we are having a uh, lecture in online mode to be delivered by sir roger frank 
from farm everybody is eager to listen to but before that i request so sir is want to uh, uh, our uh, fifth speaker sarojar bank over to yashwan thank you song my audible yeah yeah please okay. put on the camera yeah. uh, Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Roger Frank is an honorary professor of geotechnical engineering at ENPC, National School of Bridges and Highways of France. Roger Frank has devoted his entire career to the ponds at Chausses, the French Highway Administration. After 20 years with its central laboratory, LCPC. He was from 1993 to 2002 the director of T E R N E S, a teaching and research laboratory common to E N P C and L C P C. In 1997, he was promoted to the rank of professor in geotechnical engineering at E N P C. The main field of expertise of Roger Frank is in P two E. Uh, pardon is in situ testing and foundation engineering. He has authored and co-authored two forty papers in in journals and written contributions in international conferences. He has delivered invited lectures in more than fifty countries. From nineteen ninety eight to two thousand four, he was the chairman of the European Committee in charge of Eurocode seven on geotechnical design. He was the vice president for, uh, for Europe of the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering for the period 2005 to 2009, and he was the president of ISSMG for the period 2013 to 2017. Since 2019, he is referent for scientific integrity of ENPC. I welcome you, sir, Professor Frank, to this program. And now I hand over the webinar to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for for your kind words. Um, be, before uh, switching on, uh, uh, sharing my screen. Uh, no, I can do that right away. So give me a second. I hope I uh, understood the. Uh, uh, Mm. Sorry, with my presentation now, it's there, but how do I open it? Do you see it? Not yet, Roger. Uh, not yet, not yet. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh, what happened now? I'm sorry about this. No, this is wrong. Okay, give me a... It's uploading now. Now we see your screen, Roger. You just have okay, to... and I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> uh, uh, it should be there. You can yes. still see it? Yes. Put it, okay. Put and it. I can, I can, yes, sir. I can see it as well. Yes. I can see it as well, but I don't see you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues. <coughs> Uh, it's really a great honor for me and, and a pleasure to be the recipient of the fifth uh, Victor de Melo Goa lecture. I warmly thank the organizers, uh, Goa Engineering College, the uh, uh, Goa chapter of the Indian uh, Geotechnical Society, uh, also the support from uh, the Brazilian Society for Soil Mechanical Engineering, the Portuguese Society. Uh, and all of those who made this uh, event uh, possible. 
of course, Professor Savoyka and many other people. And also, I would like to thank uh, my uh, friend and I call him brother, uh, Luis Guillaume, who uh, pushed me to accept this uh, difficult uh, task. Uh, I chose a subject which uh, would please, I'm sure, Victor de Melo, uh, because we had the, the occasion to discuss about this uh, this topic, well, about, I would say, displacement of pies. Perhaps both of us had the, I would say, the feeling that perhaps it was a much better room to be able to forecast the displacement of pies uh, rather than, I would say, uh, using uh, classical theory of bearing capacity and uh, um, then uh, inserting a high factor of safety, uh, which comes in a way to master the displacement of pies. Why not try to uh, derive directly, assess directly the displacement of pies? Victor de Melo was not only uh, an extraordinary expert in all fields of geotechnical engineering, as Professor Savoyka reminded us, but he was a great example to follow for the younger ones. Uh, humanity is the first thing which was mentioned also about his career. Uh, a great example to follow for younger ones like me, I had the chance to meet him. It was each time an immense pleasure to have the privilege to discuss with him. He would divide his time and uh, patience to pass on to us, the younger ones, his unique vision and love for our profession. Victor was always, of course, extremely interested by others' work. And I must confess that I was very proud when he asked me to send him papers from a research on pies while he was preparing his book. We had the occasion to speak about the research at LCPC when he would come to Paris and would not miss the occasion to, to meet members of the French society. Uh, so for the fifth Victor de Mira lecture, I chose to speak about this subject, uh, which, as, as already mentioned, is a subject we often talk about, Victor and myself. Uh, the, uh, this is the outline. After an introduction, which I'll try to make brief, but it needs to be, uh, I would say, clear enough to define what is a MINAR pressure meter test. It's a, usually a pre-board pressure meter test. And uh, what is, uh, well, what we call in French, PAF, set boring pressure meter, pressiometre autofort, the set boring pressure meter, which is uh, the French version, I would say, of the, of the CAMCO meter and other set boring uh, devices which we develop in, in the UK independently. Actually, the first set boring pressure meter was uh, proposed by Gézéquel, uh, and in the end of 1960s, I think the first paper is 67 or 68. To speak of the subject of the day is uh, to, um, I would say, to develop, or to show how we developed uh, load transfer functions, uh, respectively the TZ curves for uh, the uh, assessment of actual displacements of pipe settlements, and the PY curves for the lateral displacements. Uh, I will speak of uh, what uh, we do every day in every day's practice, uh, where it comes from with the MENA pressure meter. But uh, it is important to speak also of the cell brewing pressure meter, at least the, the studies we made in France, uh, which helped us understand theoretically what we were doing, uh, even with the uh, MENA pressure meter. Uh, at the end, I will try to speak of uh, the behavior of Barrett's, which come directly from, uh, I would say, the theoretical examples, the theoretical studies uh, we carried out for lateral displacements. Uh, it is important to note uh, that uh, everything which will be said is based on, the, I would say, uh, well, let's call them two principles. The first one is that the MENA pressure meter only gives uh, an estimate of a modulus, we call it a pressure.
since it was developed. Anyhow, I can tell you that it was most useful uh, for us uh, in order to design uh, the roads, the motorways, and the uh, fast uh, train tracks uh, since the 1960s, 70s, 80s. And still, of course, today we're still building uh, roads and uh, railways. Uh, sorry, I missed on this, uh, this slide. Sorry to come back. You can see, uh, I would say, a typical equipment. Uh, the box there is the um, is the CPV, which is a pressure volume controller. Uh, the pressure meter itself is a is a cell which you inflate inside the ground, and uh, you will uh, measure the um, uh, you will measure for different pressures applied. You will measure the volume inserted into the central probe. Uh, the standard, uh, I would say, usual uh, MENA pressure meter has got two guard cells, which are, uh, I would say, um, inflated with uh, uh, azote, azote, sorry, nitrogen in English, I think. And uh, of course, if you need some company on the field, you can always uh, have uh, your dog. This is the dog of uh, my friend uh, Nuyens from Belgium. His dog is called uh, Lola. Uh, so again, uh, another view of the equipment. Uh, nothing new compared to the previous slide, uh, except, uh, no, it's not new, but I should have mentioned that before. You see that there's a box on the side, uh, because in the French practice, we want, of course, all the data to be recorded uh, in order to have some, uh, I would say, uh, mathematical process. Of course, you can always take the measurements by hand and uh, go back to the laboratory, but uh, we, we impose in the French uh, um, practice, we impose the recording of all the, the uh, data. So the, mainly the pressure and the volume. Uh, the, there is a standard which is uh, uh, at the uh, international European level. It's an EN standard like Eurocodes, but it's a Euro standard. Uh, it's also adopted by ISO, the International Standards Organization, the, of which India is a member. And I've uh, just uh, written down for you the uh, reference for uh, the uh, the one uh, published by uh, the British uh, Standards Institution BSI. So it's a BSEN ISO. Before you go to the the number, it's interesting to see that uh, well the um, last version is rather recent. It's 2021. Uh, I want to call your attention on two things inside in these um, in this standard I mean in, uh, in the standard in a way uh, two important things for the practice uh, for performing correctly uh, a MINAR test uh, you should uh, check carefully uh, the uh, uh, I would say the boring technique I won't go into the details of this table but uh, you should know that it's inside the, all the standards on the MINAR pressure meter uh, so you should uh, choose carefully uh, the boring technique according to uh, the type of soil and in some cases you can uh, use uh, uh, so it's with soil displacement and at some time you can use uh, 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 what is called a slotted tube in order to drive the equipment but in some very uh, few occasions especially in sands below the water table otherwise you will use one of these uh, methods for uh, the pre-bore hole uh, this is uh, the caption uh, which goes with the previous table. The second thing I want to stress is uh, also uh, you uh, should follow, uh, I would say, the maximum allowed uh, drilling length before testing. You're not allowed to dr say to drill the whole uh, uh, the whole uh, hole uh, until the bottom of the investigation and then do your pressure meter test. By, I would say. Uh, uh, each meter usually it's uh, being performed. Uh, you should uh, you're allowed only to have a, to uh, do this drilling in advance only for a few meters. This is a table which gives you which gives you uh, the corresponding instructions. Uh, so this is a typical uh, pressure meter uh, result. Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, in the standard uh, I would say or the common practice we have the the pressures in. Uh, in the ordinate and uh, sorry, in the abscess, and we have the volumes in the ordinate. Uh, two things must be um, uh, uh, must be, I would say, uh, stressed: is uh, the two parameters we define. There is a modulus which I mentioned already earlier. Already, the modulus EM uh, somewhere between the original uh, at rest pressure and the creep pressure. 
uh, you see 2.66 GM, it comes from the fact that basically the pressure meter test is a sharing test. And what you measure is a modulus, uh, shear modulus. Uh, but uh, Menard thought that the engineers would not understand what is the shear modulus, so he converted that into a Young's modulus, say, or equivalent of a Young's modulus, uh, by uh, using a Poisson ratio equal to 0.3. So whatever the ground we use, Poisson ratio of 0.33, it's a convention, and we go to this famous uh, Menard modulus. Uh, of course, I already mentioned that uh, <laughs> there's a long distance between this Menard uh, pressure meter modulus and what is or what would be a Young's a relevant Young's modulus of the ground. What I call a Young's modulus of the ground is a modulus which inserted into uh, theoretical solutions uh, for um, uh, inelasticity and uh, isotropic inelasticity would give you the correct answer. Uh, to cut a long story short, but I'm not coming uh, yet to the end of my lecture, the Menar modulus is much too soft when we insert it into uh, these theoretical solutions. Uh, it is not the same with the cell boring pressure meter, which we will see uh, later. And the second parameter, I come back to this uh, typical result, the second parameter is the limit pressure, of course, uh, which is usually, uh, well, conventionally, and it's in the standard, it should be the pressure uh, you will reach or you will extrapolate to corresponding to the doubling of the volume of the cavity. So these are the two parameters we will use, uh, typically in a, in a French investigation, or a common investigation for foundations. Typically, you will have a soil profile from the pressure meter, uh, so the, uh, the mineral modulus and the limit pressure, and sometimes the creep pressure, which is somewhere uh, at the end of the, um, uh, at the, sorry, at the, where we measure the uh, mineral modulus. It's uh, the start of the plasticity, the start of the creep of the ground in uh, the uh, theoretical interpretation of the Menard pressure meter test. Uh, what, now I come to the state bond pressure meter much quicker. Just to show you, this is a 1976 version, French version. It was the third type of uh, state bond pressure meter. The first one had the rods turning uh, from uh, the surface, then uh, the hydraulic engine was put inside this, the, the probe at the, uh, the top. And uh, this is the last, I would say, uh, but not least, the one we would use when we still use it, with the hydraulic engine at the toe of the, uh, of the probe uh, inside the cutting shoe. So by, uh, uh, I would say, um, uh, by the uh, tool, which is called D on this lecture, on this uh, drawing, with the hydraulic engine just above. You see, we insert the pressure meter into the ground uh, without pre bore hole, of course, and uh, uh, with a minimum of disturbance. Uh, and uh, we expect, in fact, then the ground to be uh, tested in an intact manner, uh, of course, by inflating uh, the central cell. You can see that at the top of the, this um, uh, slide, I've put Concord and Airbus. <laughs> you might wonder what is the link. Well, uh, Concorde and Airbus are two uh, planes, of course, you know that. The link is the uh, following, that uh, in a way, at least in front, the cell boring pressure meter was never really, uh, I would say, commercially implemented. It's only, it remained a, a research tool and it's not used in common practice. But without the cell boring pressure meter, we have not, we would not have understood what we're doing with the MENAR one. And the same way, it's, I would say, it's the, um, the, uh, the innovation uh, with the cell boring pressure meter and uh, uh, which uh, helped us, as I said, understand uh, what we're doing with the MENA, I'm repeating myself, but what I want to say, it's, uh, it's the Concorde technology, the technology of Concorde. Concorde was a Franco-British plane. Commercially, it was never a success, and uh, I think only 12 or 13 or 14 um, examples of the Concorde were, were built and it stopped uh, being a commercial, uh, it was never really succeeded commercially, let's say it, uh, put it this way. But without the Concord technology, there would be no Airbus, and the Airbus technology comes directly from the Concord. So if you like the link, uh, it's a link, it's try to, sorry? 
No, somebody was speaking. Sorry. Yes, uh, it's to uh, show to uh, I would say the researchers or even to the stakeholders that sometimes you have some advanced research which by itself is not a commercial or whatever uh, success, an everyday success. But without this research, you would not uh, reach some other more uh, important commercial uh, successes. Uh, this is a reference for the standard uh, for the cell bone pressure meter, at least the English, uh, British version of it. Again, a British standard, um, a British standard uh, reference. It's also in the end, uh, European and ISO standard. Now, let's come to the point. Uh, this is a typical, uh, I would say, uh, the typical expansion curves from uh, the cell borrowing pressure meter and uh, from the Menard pressure meter. We see the difference. We see that the cell borrowing pressure meter is much stiffer. It's also, uh, I would say, uh, uh, continuously uh, uh, the, the, the slope, so the pressure meter modulus in a way, is constantly, uh, is, uh, uh, is in decreasing progressively. In the MENAR pressure meter, we have uh, this uh, MENAR uh, uh, sorry, modulus from uh, POM to PF, roughly. And uh, this is a unique modulus over this uh, range, as in the corresponding range with the self boring pressure meter, what I wanted to say, we'll have a series of uh, moduli for different uh, stress levels. Uh, so, uh, when we uh, uh, compare these various moduli, you see for uh, the uh, uh, cell boring pressure meter, we have uh, uh, the initial uh, shear modulus uh, at, uh, well, nearly zero deformation. In fact, the first measure is taken at 0.2%, the GP0, then at 2% of volumetric deformation, then at 5% deformation. And you see various ratios. Uh, especially uh, the ratios of the 2% and 5% uh, compared to uh, MENAR uh, shear modulus. And uh, <coughs> more importantly than everything is the last column is in fact the ratio of uh, uh, the this initial uh, modulus from the cell boring pressure meter to the uh, MENAR uh, shear modulus. You see this ratio Clay is 11.3, sand 4.1. This is a, I would say, kind of a, uh, it's, it's more or less some statistic over various sites. And uh, these two numbers are very interesting because uh, uh, when I have to convert some uh, MENAR pressure meter data to get, uh, I would say, uh, Young's modulus of the ground, for sands, I will, uh, it's a kind of thumb rule, but it's based on some data. For sands, I will use systematically a ratio of four, and for clay, the ratio of 10. Uh, for instance, uh, when, uh, as I was speaking of displays of piles today, uh, sometimes uh, uh, I will show you the models for uh, the behavior of isolated single piles, but when it comes to group of piles, we've got to assess some kind of uh, um, uh, sorry, some, uh, yes, some uh, shear modulus. Uh, elastic shear modulus in between the piles. And this is the kind of, uh, these are the figures I would use for clays and sands. Uh, let me go to the TZ curves from the MENAR pressure meter uh, results and uh, quickly some examples. Uh, so this is uh, what is commonly used in France. It's uh, some very simple work uh, I carried out, uh, you see, uh, nearly 40 years ago with uh, uh, a Chinese colleague of mine uh, who was uh, visiting France, who was a trainee at, our, at LCPC. And in fact, this has proved to be very robust. And it's been, uh, at that time, it was for uh, board piles and cohesive soils. And it's been extended to granular soils. It's been extended to um, uh, also driven piles. Uh, it's a very simple rule. You see uh, this initial stiffnesses for uh, the TZ curves on the left and for uh, the end bearing uh, uh, curve on the, the right. Uh, the initial uh, moduli uh, K tau and K Q are uh, given uh, below. They are, they are some great reaction moduli in a way because they are not homogeneous to moduli, but of course we can make them easily mod uh, homogeneous to moduli. Uh, they are modulus divided by uh, by a distance. Uh, when we plot T Z or Q uh, Q S bits, uh, it's uh, 
the slope is uh, indeed uh, a pressure divided by uh, by a distance. Uh, they used uh, every day now in France for when we're looking at the displacement of piles. It's used, for instance, in our new uh, methods for uh, our new methods for region inclusions and uh, in other problems where we need to uh, a group of piles in the uh, obvious problems where we need to um, check the displacement of uh, the various piles, uh, not only uh, the bearing capacity. Uh, so this is a typical example. Uh, uh, it's an imprison, it's imprison clay in Belgium. And you see how uh, it was uh, the, one of our first surprises, how close it was to the measured uh, a load settlement curve of a full scale pile. Uh, it's a screw pile, uh, let me remember, 35 to 50 centimeters uh, in the imprison clay. This is another example. Uh, you can see uh, this is a continuous flight over pile, a full scale test. Uh, CFA pile, 50 centimeters in diameter. Uh, I check uh, the length seven, sorry, uh, 12 meter long uh, in uh, silts uh, overlain by, uh, no, sorry, in clays overlain by uh, silt. If you look at the, this carefully, uh, so the, the results is the red, of the test is the red uh, curve with uh, the red triangles. The two nearest curves are uh, the one with the blue circles and the one uh, with the, the gray, I uh, would say the gray um, stars. Uh, so obtained respectively by Said and others and by uh, Robas and Kuder. And it's interesting to uh, know that these two group of people, these two groups of people have used the, the Frank and Zao method uh, independently. Uh, of course, uh, the only thing they had in common were the, the rough uh, results of the pressure meter tests. Uh, these rough results being uh, corrected according to uh, the standard. Uh, I come now to the TZ curves from the cell boring pressure meter tests. Uh, first, the theoretical background. As I told you, uh, we were to use uh, the results of the cell boring test by uh, looking at uh, theoretical models in uh, elastic linear isotropic uh, media. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, the first uh, mesh in finite elements which were used in, uh, you see, years ago. This was my PhD thesis in a way. Uh, and this allowed us to come to this uh, famous uh, mechanism of pure sharing of vertical concentric annually, which was to be um, um, taken on board or as well by uh, Randolph and Rose. The result of this elastic uh, uh, study was that the stiffness TZ uh, is, of course, uh, linked to the shear modulus of the soil, the uh, intact elastic modulus of the, sh of the soil, uh, divided by, by the stiffness, of course, by, sorry, divided by the, the, the radius of the pile. Uh, and all this is in inverse proportion to a K factor. This K factor has been examined by various authors, and the, res the results are quite consistent. They depend, uh, this K factor depends on uh, the slenderness ratio of the pile. This is why you see its value uh, as a function of uh, D over the by 2R0. My initial study in uh, the early 70s or in the mid 70s uh, was to uh, use K equal to 3 to 4. But the latest studies you see. Uh, would develop and would, uh, I would say, uh, give more details on the values of K. But for standard piles, it's somewhere between three and uh, four and a half, say. It's, it varies slightly with, young, with sorry, the Poisson ratio. Uh, we uh, were able, uh, you see, hey, I put the, I took the value of 4.6. Uh, you know, in the cell uh, expansion test, uh, you can derive a shear curve from the test in uh, at least in um, in uh, Andre situations. So this is a tau gamma on uh, the uh, left curve. And uh, from this uh, shear curve, 
non-linear in principle, we uh, wanted to see the effect on the TZ curve for the pile, which is the, uh, the curve on the right. And uh, the most interesting thing is that, uh, uh, in fact, the non-linearity on uh, the uh, shear curve of the soil is, uh, I would say, uh, decreased its influence is much smaller on the TZ curve of the pile. Uh, you recognize uh, what I said earlier, that the toe uh, knot is linked to W knot divided by R, so through um, G0 divided by K, K being 4.6. Uh, some examples. Uh, in fact, uh, we used um, uh, these uh, results. Uh, you see it's called load transfer function. The TZ curves uh, from the cell bone pressure meter. In, in short, we used uh, the uh, G moduli, uh, obtained the G divided by K in the load transfer function approach. Uh, also, we use directly the finite element with the uh, uh, the uh, elastic uh, G0. And you see that these results are quite uh, near uh, the experimental results. It's a pull-out test on the site of Caen, which is a plastic uh, clay. Uh, we did the same with another pile. It's in Plancouet, so these are silts and sand, say. Sorry, the length of the pile in Caen was uh, 17 meter. Both piles are driven pipe piles. The length of the one here in Plancouet is, well, 13 meters. Here, of course, the, the match is not that perfect. You see that uh, we underestimate uh, the uh, displacement, but I would say the discrepancy at working loads, at working load is quite acceptable. So this is a way to use directly so-called young moduli of the soil at least the shear young modulus, the shear modulus G of the soil in, uh, I would say, uh, uh, predicting uh, the load settlement curve of a pile. Uh, I come to the lateral displacements. For the lateral displacement for the PY curve, the load transfer curves for oriental loads, lateral loads, from the Menard pressure meter results, uh, we use, uh, we still use, but we, uh, of course, had to check that. We still use the original uh, proposal by Menard. The MENA proposal uh, is to have this uh, subgrade reaction uh, uh, modulus from his uh, uh, from the modulus measured with the MENA pressure meter. Uh, so when you have the PY curve, you have got a what we call a coefficient of subgrade reaction. The K you can see on the initial phase. Uh, in fact, uh, for lateral loads, we much prefer. Uh, working with uh, something homogeneous to modulus, so we, we all know that from the coefficient of subgrade reaction by multiplying by the, the uh, width of, of the diameter of the foundation, we come to something which is homogeneous to a modulus. Uh, the bottom uh, line on this slide uh, shows uh, the initial proposal by uh, Menard, uh, how to get the uh, subgrade reaction modulus, the reaction modulus from is pressure meter modulus. Uh, to come back to the PY curve above, uh, the um, upper curve is the one we would uh, use commonly for long duration loadings. In fact, the modulus given by Menard is, uh, I would say, uh, we found out it was rather um, soft in a way for short term uh, loadings, for instance, like we do when we do pilot tests, but for long uh, duration behaviors, like under our bridges and other, uh, I would say, buildings, uh, other constructions, uh, it's quite relevant uh, to have his modulus. Uh, you see uh, that uh, for safety reasons, uh, for uh, actual design, we will limit this uh, uh, reaction pressure P to uh, uh, the creep pressure, which you can see with the horizontal line A, B dash. Uh, in other circumstances, I mean, uh, when there's no uh, safety at stake with the horizontal uh, uh, behavior, we would uh, say that uh, the ultimate pressure, horizontal pressure on the pile is uh, the limit pressure of the pressure meter. The mechanisms are quite similar. The bottom uh, curve is simply to say that you have to reduce 
the PY curve, the stiffness of the PY curve when we are at uh, shallow depths. Uh, so for uh, uh, at surface, you would take the same curve and divide it by uh, two. The next table shows you, uh, in fact, uh, some numerical values by applying the, the more or less complicated formula, which was on the previous slide. Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, in Menard's uh, philosophy, when you, are, uh, you have a diameter below 60 centimeters, so it's a kind of reference, uh, it's a kind of reference uh, width or diameter of the pile, uh, the, uh, uh, the ratio is rather constant is constant. From 0.6 meters to uh, larger values, uh, the ratio uh, uh, is not uh, the, sorry, the uh, ratio, yes, of the reaction modulus to the Menard modulus depends on uh, the width of the foundation. So this is uh, different from elastic theory. Uh, I will come to uh, the theoretical background, uh, the theoretical studies we did with the cell boring pressure meter, of course, or with, I would say, the elastic theory, but it helped us understand uh, what we can do with the cell boring pressure meter results. In this uh, section of lateral displacement, uh, I have uh, put together the examples, uh, both for the MENA and for the PATH, because uh, uh, the main important results had on instrumented piles, uh, in fact, uh, compare uh, the uh, two approaches on the same examples, the same uh, experiments. Uh, so uh, we started with some, uh, started to look at the inference of the shape of the section of the pile uh, in uh, two dimensions, always in isotropic and aesthetic media. And indeed, we we're looking at uh, the influence you see of the uh, the length in the in uh, the oriental plane compared to the width. In fact, uh, we're going to uh, we had to study uh, the PY curves for barrettes. Barrettes are uh, some uh, panels, some slurry trench panels. I would call them some diaphragm panels. Uh, in fact, piles of elongated, elongated uh, cross area section in the, in the horizontal plan. Uh, and, but uh, their construction method is uh, similar to a board pile uh, with slurry usually. So we fall into the, um, we fall into uh, the category of uh, board piles, which is important, for instance, for the bearing capacity and things like that. I forgot to tell you that uh, on my TZ curves in the first part, I spoke uh, at length of the initial uh, stiffnesses, but I should have mentioned also uh, that the ultimate values for the shaft friction and for uh, the end uh, bearing, the end pressure, can be taken from any uh, set of rules uh, um, about the bearing capacity of piles. So coming back to the lateral capacity, uh, after uh, this study in two dimensions, uh, we were able to, uh, I would say, to uh, assess, uh, evaluate uh, the uh, part of the frontal uh, resistance, frontal reaction of a barrette. We'll see that later, what it is exactly. Uh, and of the tangential part, because when you have a barrette elongated, uh, of course, uh, you have to check carefully what's happening on the sides of the barrette, especially if it is uh, in the right uh, direction. We uh, here, uh, we studied from uh, uh, L over B for one fifth, which is not really important, interesting, to uh, L over B equal to five or seven, <coughs> which is the usual direction you would use when you are to um, resist some uh, lateral load by the inertia of uh, the cross section of the pile. So this was for, sorry, the previous one was for the angle of, uh, sorry, the Poisson ratio of O33, and this one for O45. There is an influence of Poisson ratio, uh, not very big, but there is one. Uh, <coughs> to look at the three-dimensional aspects, we use the finite elements uh, uh, for, uh, which are rather 
easy when in the case of this axisymmetric geometry, but uh, with the load which is not axisymmetric, then you would use a Fourier series, a Fourier series development, and you would, uh, I would say, uh, study in only one plane, and then according to uh, the development in, in Fourier series of your load, you would uh, then uh, add the various elastic solutions you get for the various. Uh, uh, terms of the Fourier series. In the case of reason to load, it's rather easy because there's only one term in the uh, Fourier series. That means uh, if you want to have uh, the result in the other plane, uh, you would simply uh, have uh, multiplication by uh, sine or cosine delta. So this is uh, also again in the hydropeclean elasticity. And uh, the results are uh, shown on this uh, very important graph. In fact, we studied many three-dimensional effects, uh, many three-dimensional effects for the lateral reaction of, of piles. Uh, because when you have a PY curve, uh, some way you assume that, uh, uh, you assume that um, the various slices uh, of pile soil uh, system act in the same uh, manner. In fact, there are some three-dimensional effects you should uh, pay attention to. So we look at uh, the uh, slender ratio of the pile, you see L over 2R0. We look at uh, the relative uh, stiffness of the pile uh, uh, with regard to the soil. So the, you see this uh, root at the order 4 of the pile modulus divided by the Young's modulus of the soil. You have also in another scale in front, we would rather use the, the, the lower scale, which is uh, dividing uh, the length by uh, the uh, elastic length in uh, the solution, uh, uh, in the solution, uh, the theoretical solution of the subgrade reaction uh, theory. Whatever, if we look at carefully at this figure, and if we have a uh, certain sense engineering common sense, say, we want to come out with one figure. Uh, you can see that, uh, sorry, I forgot to say that we plotted in uh, ordinate uh, the ratio, this, uh, the ratio of uh, the uh, Young's modulus to the uh, reaction modulus. Uh, for various reasons, it is the inverse of what I was uh, uh, using before, where we were using, especially for the Menard pressure meter, we're using uh, ES divided by EM. Here it's the Young's modulus divided by uh, this um, reaction modulus. So you're going to tell me about which reaction modulus did you use? In fact, we used the reaction modulus which fit into uh, the beam PY solution. We give the same displacement at uh, the head of the pile. By plotting then E by div divided by ES between brackets U, that means matching the same displacement, we come to a ratio of 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. You can see that on the, uh, I don't know if you see my arrow. You see my arrow? Uh, you see it's around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 here for most of the piles. It comes to say that the reaction modulus, the equivalent reaction modulus we're looking for uh, is equivalent to four times the uh, share modulus uh, of the ground, the shear modulus in uh, isotropic linear elasticity. It's interesting to see that uh, our first uh, proposal to use uh, the, min the, sorry, the cell bearing pressure meter curves was to use the expansion curve directly. This is why uh, you can see that uh, uh, we uh, say that uh, the link between P, so the, I'm back to a pressure divided by uh, while something resembling a deformation, of course, the horizontal displacement divided by the radius of the pile uh, is uh, equivalent to uh, the expansion curve uh, P um, in relation to uh, half the volumetric expansion, which is uh, uh, homogeneous to uh, the strain around the pressure meter probe, cell burn pressure meter probe. And we would limit this uh, pressure uh, to the ultimate, well, the ultimate pressure, of course, the, the PY curve is, is, <coughs> is limited to the ultimate pressure on the pile by, by definition. And we uh, uh, 
thoughts and use that as an ultimate pressure, the deformation, the pressure, 20% deformation on the, uh, on uh, uh, the, from the cell boring pressure meter expansion curve. So uh, by doing this, <coughs> please look at the box below the figure. Uh, by using, so the expansion curve itself, it comes to say that uh, the modulus of reaction, so the PY uh, uh, stiffness, say, uh, is equal to 4GP, which matches nearly excellently, at least for engineering judgment, uh, what we obtained uh, with uh, the uh, isotropic linear elasticity calculations. For permanent, uh, for repeat or permanent loadings, we would rather divide this uh, curve by two, at least for clay or silty soils, and for sandy soils, uh, it will be somewhere in between. So these are the two curves. Well, the one then becoming two curves on the right. You see that for repeated or permanent loading, clay or silty soils and sandy soils respectively, and uh, we're speaking the p versus y divided by r zero curve. Uh, the examples, in fact, uh, I took them, uh, it's rather historical, it's to show you how all this was established. Uh, we check, of course, uh, uh, well, it was initially established from experimental, uh, uh, full-scale experiments. And nowadays, uh, we don't perform any more full-scale experiments on lateral loaded piles, unfortunately. But of course, in our everyday practice, uh, we check, uh, <clears throat> we use these uh, the rules, especially the men are ones, and uh, we check that the behavior of our foundations are okay, and we haven't had any problems uh, so far. So the experiments on which we based our, I would say, our confidence uh, are the one of Provin and the one of Saled, which will come later. The Provin case is uh, we uh, in, we installed a driven pile inside the, at the, inside the, a rather soft soil, uh, loaded the pile horizontally at the head, and then we uh, built an embankment uh, next to the pile uh, to see how uh, well what would be uh, the uh, loading on the piles uh, provoked by uh, the horizontal the lateral movements of the ground. You recognize at once a typical uh, bridge problem. I mean, uh, a problem for geotechnical engineers who deal with bridges. When we are near uh, embankments, we always, uh, I would say, we should always, um, on soft soil, we should always uh, care about uh, the lateral thrusts on the pile, but also on the negative friction of the pile. Uh, so the pile was heavily instrumented. And uh, here are the, the results of the comparison with our pressure meter approach. It's method A, which I ask you to compare with the measurements. The measurements are in the continuous line. And the cell boring uh, uh, approach, with uh, which is method C1, uh, which we can also compare. Uh, in this problem, uh, this is, sorry, I forgot to tell you that uh, it is written, but it's uh, the head loading before we build the embankment. And you can see that uh, the MENAR, uh, if I look at the displacement on the right, you can see that the MENAR, uh, the MENAR uh, reaction curves overestimate uh, the displacements. Uh, and this is why, uh, a factor of two roughly, this is why uh, we use the MENA one only for long duration. For short duration, uh, what we propose is quite uh, satisfactory if we look at the, this, uh, these results. The, uh, uh, the bending moments with the MENA are also uh, well estimated. Of course, it's uh, uh, less difficult to uh, predict the, the bending moments when you are heading, when you're loading the pile at the head because it's mostly a uh, I would say um, it's a load uh, controlled uh, test. Uh, what you're looking and what is really unknown is the displacement. So the bending moments are not that, uh, I would say, scattered. Uh, in both, uh, for both the displacements and for the bending moments for this head loading, uh, the uh, cell boring pressure meter, 
uh, using directly the expansion curve are uh, rather optimistic, you can see. The uh, displacements are underestimated, C1 on the right, and the bending moments are also underestimated. Now, if you look at what happened, or what is happening, this is what, the same comparison, but with the um, pile being uh, uh, submitted to lateral thrust due to the embankment, uh, this is after the final height of the embankment. Uh, we can uh, have, uh, we can see, uh, I would say, uh, an inverse problem. In this case, it's a displacement control problem because uh, of the soil displacement, which is an input in our method. We input uh, what we call the free soil movement, G, and uh, we, same, we use the same lateral reaction curves by replacing the uh, absolute movement Y by uh, the difference of displacement between Y, which is the pile soil equilibrium displacement minus uh, the uh, free soil displacement, G, Y minus G. Uh, so it's rather controlled the displacement uh, problem and then the, 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 the well test, and then the problem is to uh, uh, predict the uh, uh, bending moment. You see that uh, again, uh, the measurements are M, the continuous line, the minar, uh, uh, prediction method is uh, not that bad, it's uh, A, and also uh, by uh, using the uh, cell boring expansion curve, but uh, with uh, the uh, uh, stiffness divided by two, that is the displacement multiplied by two, so we have uh, this reaction modulus uh, of 5850 kilopascal compared to the 11,700 on the previous slide, we see that uh, the match is not that bad for, in all cases, for the bending moments in the top layer. Uh, in these problems, there's also another bending moment, maximum bending moment, uh, near the interface between the soil, uh, the soft soil and the substratum. We're speaking of uh, uh, lateral thrusts along uh, the pile on the whole length of uh, the soft soil. And it's always very difficult to predict this uh, bending moment at the interface. And for sure, uh, with these PY methods, in this difficult uh, situation, I would say that I'm not sure that we can capture uh, very precisely uh, the behavior of the pile over its whole length. Perhaps some continuous analysis. Uh, well, I mean, analysis in a continuum uh, would be easier, but uh, then we have all the problem of uh, the problem of uh, um, using the say the correct uh, soil modern and soil data. Uh, and now I come to the uh, salad uh, experiment. I'm very proud of this uh, experiment uh, because it uh, uh, lasted for something like uh, 16 years. Uh, I'm going to say more about it in a few uh, seconds. And uh, this uh, was published in Geotechnique in London, and uh, we got the George Stevenson Medal in 2009 from the Institution of Civil Engineers. Uh, this medal is the second best paper over the year in all the journals, uh, I think uh, there are a few thousand papers published in all various journals of the Institute of Civil Engineers. And this geotechnical uh, paper uh, got uh, the second prize compared to all the, uh, uh, well, all the subjects in all the journals. Uh, the, the experiment of Salet was uh, consisted in inserting uh, an equipped pile, an instrumented pile again, in a sliding mass, in a naturally sliding surface. Again, one of our problems in the highways of France. And uh, we uh, uh, wanted to uh, check what would happen if uh, uh, we would uh, reactivate this uh, this. Uh, natural surface, surface, sliding surface, by building an embankment above it. You can see the problem. Uh, you have some parameters in the table below. Uh, we have some colluvial marls uh, uh, above some compact marls, and you can see the uh, natural sliding surface, old surface, which uh, was carefully uh, uh, well recorded, say, or measured with inclinometers, etc., etc. Many other um, experience had happened on this uh, site of Saled. Uh, the uh, idea was to, uh, I would say, to uh, 
uh, measure again uh, the uh, load and displacement of a pile uh, when uh, subjected to lateral thrust. Uh, in fact, the sliding surface uh, would uh, move uh, every year when it was raining, uh, it would move. So we thought in uh, two years' time, two winter times in our country, we would reach something like 30 centimeters of displacement of the of the sliding mass. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, I don't know. Because of dry season at that time, it took us something like uh, uh, 10 or 15 years before we had the 30 centimeters. But after all, it was the occasion to measure then, uh, I would say, these uh, PY curves uh, for longer duration. Uh, this is the equipment of the pile, uh, heavily equipped. You see some pair of strain gauges every 75 centimeters, uh, an inclementer inside the pile, inclementers around the pile also to see what would be the free soil movement. Uh, waterproof plug at the uh, bottom, which proved to be very efficient as we could uh, take measurements uh, for 16 years and even more in some cases, but full measurements were taken for 16 years and some measurements uh, were taken uh, later until 19 or 20 years, but uh, not along the whole shaft, so uh, I won't speak of them. Uh, so this is a view of, uh, a nice view of the countryside in France. I usually show the village Salet before, but uh, don't have time today. In fact, uh, it's to show you that uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm taking the picture and I'm uh, on the embankment. And what I see uh, uh, at the bottom is, uh, in fact, a kind of uh, anchor which is anchoring uh, the head of the pile. You see the system <coughs> at the end of this anchor. The anchor was a kind of pre-stressed concrete. It's anchoring uh, the uh, the head of the pile, uh, anchoring it back to kind of, kind of wall which was uh, behind the embankment. The idea was to fix the pile, its head, so we'd have the maximum soil displacement, well, displacement between the pile and the soil, the moving soil. Here are the results. Uh, so we took uh, some measurements until, uh, well, 29 July 1999, so this is 16 years after we've inserted the pile. The measurements are in the full uh, dotted, the full line, sorry. And we see the Menard pressure meter uh, approach, uh, the completely at the, in, the bot in the top area, it's the left, completely left curve. Uh, you see that it's very pessimistic. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, the cell borrowing pressure meter is slightly better. In the bottom of the pile, uh, the same, we have uh, problems in uh, estimating this bending moment, but you see that uh, uh, it's a long duration problem. Uh, we have no more of the uh, long term, long duration data on instrumented piles on the planet, unfortunately. So the paper uh, did, uh, uh, of course, uh, acknowledge that we couldn't go any further. I just want to show you, uh, before leaving this slide, uh, the uh, prediction, well, prediction, is it a prediction? The derived PY, in fact, the derived PY curve, <coughs> in fact, it's to use as PY curve, the one we get from the bending moment measurements. Uh, when you have bending moments, uh, you probably know that if you integrate twice, you get the lateral deflation. And if you um, derive twice, uh, and if you, no, sorry, if you derive twice, you get uh, the, um, I'm getting lost now, in a PY curve, you must integrate twice to have the displacement, sorry, and derive twice to have the pressures. Sorry for this distinction. And you can build then derive PY curve. This was possible in the top, in the upper layers of the of the ground. Uh, in the bottom layers, it was not possible because uh, the, I would say the measurement was small, so small that you imagine to, after this uh, double mathematical process to get the PY curve was, uh, I would say, nearly impossible. So we use the Menard pressure meter prediction for the bottom. And you see that in the bottom of the pile, indeed, this derived PY uh, uh, line is uh, not very good, and the upper one it is much better. And in fact, this is the final stage after 16 years. In the first stages, uh, this uh, kind of uh, 
it's a kind of mathematical check. It's a loop, in fact. Uh, it's uh, you derive from the bonding moments of PY curves, and you input them again in your beam uh, resolution uh, as PY curves, and uh, you see if uh, uh, the, it matches uh, what uh, well the measured from which you took the PY. So it's turning into circles, but it is uh, into circle, but it helps you. I would say check the mathematical consistency, which was quite good in the pre in the first stages. Anyhow, we could not check this consistency. I repeat myself in the bottom uh, layers. Uh, the behavior of Barrett. So this can be rather quick. I don't know if I, uh, my time is over or not. I haven't checked that. In the bottom, uh, sorry. In uh, uh, yes, uh, the behavior of Barrett. So as I said, Barrett's are elongated. Uh, cross-section piles, uh, like slurry trench uh, wall panels, but with a bearing capacity uh, function and also a lateral uh, uh, resistance function. Uh, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, we, uh, in our method, we split uh, the um, cross-section into two parts. There's, uh, it's a diameter of the width is B, sorry, it's a width. There's no more diameter. We're not in circle piles. Sorry. If we divide this uh, width, uh, sorry, uh, yes, if we take half of the width uh, along the length behind and half of the width uh, in front, uh, let's say this, the contribution of the ground to resist the lateral movements on these two bits is comparable to a square pile or a circle pile. In the case of a barrette, we have uh, on the sides uh, to take account, especially if long L is much larger or larger than L, then B, we have to take into account some, uh, uh, not only uh, some frontal reaction, which I mentioned, for um, but also some uh, lateral uh, reaction. And we will, our method is, uh, sorry, tangential reaction. Our method is built in the following manner, is used in the following manner. We first, uh, I would say, uh, we first assess the frontal reaction, the P front, you see in dotted lines, uh, which uh, like our usual uh, way for circular or a square pile, uh, you can see that uh, the uh, ultimate pressure is our limit pressure with the Menard pressure meter. Given this frontal uh, reaction curve, we uh, derive from the results uh, I showed earlier in the 2D finite element analysis, we can derive the tangential reaction, uh, which depends on the L over B, uh, which gives us uh, the frontal reaction, uh, sorry, which give us, uh, we can derive the, the stiffness on the, sorry, we can derive the tangential stiffness or the stiffness of the tangential part, which is uh, to be uh, inserted into the P tangential U curve. And uh, the uh, maximum of this uh, uh, tangential curve, the P tangent maximum is taken from, I would say the maximum friction you would get on a board pile. We use the same rules. This is a proposal. Uh, we've never been able to check it. Uh, well, we've used it in some cases where there was no really, uh, I would say, some safety or uh, large movements at stake. So we do not really know how ac accurate it is. But this is, I would see, uh, I would say, uh, sent to all of you, and if you can. Uh, uh, instrument a barrette one day, uh, it would be nice to check and measure the PY curve on the barrette or the total one, it would be nice to check if this is okay. I come to my conclusions. The MENA pressure meter and the cell boring pressure meter allow deformation parameters to be measured in situ. A clear distinction should be made between the moduli obtained for the reason I explained. TY and PY load transfer curves can be assessed for the prediction of pile movements, including when they are so lateral thrust and also when they are in actual negative friction, uh, uh, an item which I did not develop today, but we've used it also for negative friction. 
The determination of the MENA pressure meter curves is mainly empirical. Full scale tests have been used to correlate it. The determination of the cell borrowing pressure meter curve is based on theoretical studies in linear isotropic elasticity. Short and long durations are and should be taken into account. The theoretical studies help validating approach and help us having confidence in what we're doing. But of course, the more full-scale data are available, the better. We need more. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, sir, for a very excellent and enlightening lecture. So normally for invited lectures, we do not have any question answers. But if anybody is having any doubts, you can interact with the speaker. With pleasure. Any questions to be asked? Yeah. Was I too long? I don't know how long it took me. No. No, one hour, two minutes, sir. It was uh, well within time. Oh. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but now things uh, were clear now because I, had the impression I, I was giving so much information uh, in a short time that uh, I don't know. Uh, exactly. Exactly that, Kojer. Without, uh, without uh, asking you something, a statement is that your last name is well uh, it's very proper, with the, uh, a frankness that should be uh, enhanced here. You showed us in a very practical way, not only, uh, uh, let's say, positive uh, conclusions of your long-term research, but you also shared with us uh, doubts and um, proposals for the future. So, so this is yeah. very, very interesting. I want to stress that all this was only possible uh, at the time and because of, uh, uh, I would say, the philosophy we had to uh, carry out full-scale tests on piles. Uh, of course, nowadays, the economic situation, uh, well, for, for 20 years even, the economic conditions of the construction industry in France and abroad is such that we cannot we cannot afford anymore to have uh, such instrumented piles. But uh, uh, in this 80s, even still 90s, we would, uh, I would say, sometimes have uh, one million francs experiments. There was money available in the French highways to do that. Of course, with help of the contractors and everybody was keen on uh, getting more data on, uh, you know, calibrating our methods. Nowadays, uh, what can I tell you? Uh, for the research on piles, well, we use either finite elements or we use the small scale uh, in the laboratory, you know, or centrifuge testing. But full scale tests, I'm speaking of instrumented piles, mm -hmm. they're not many carried anymore. Uh, on the, it's the same situation on all the planets, which is uh, uh, unfortunate. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think uh, one day, well, perhaps it's not. Uh, it's not the fashion uh, today, uh, but one day we'll uh, go back to this way, which is, uh, I would say, uh, this method of doing, because it's the only way we're sure that uh, we have uh, uh, safe foundations uh, and also not only safe, but also need to be uh, economic. So it's right. easy to do. It's easy to do something safe. But, you know, you put a lot of material, a lot of concrete, whatever, steel. But uh, is it economic? And is it, after all, is it, uh, is it, uh, you know, uh, uh, environmentally correct? Is it uh, sustainable? Uh, we use methods. I'm sorry, we, we just don't know which is a factor. We don't know what is the level of safety of our methods. We're sure it's okay because it holds. Uh, our bridges are not on the floor. Uh, our buildings are holding straight, well, more or less. But we don't know what the real safety is there. And if we only really want to contribute to the, I would say, the sustainability of the planet, we should really uh, uh, be very careful about the, the quantity of concrete or steel we use. And uh, the only uh, way to, to be sure of what we're doing is full-scale tests. It's neither the finite elements nor the, uh, the small scales, you know, uh, uh, small-scale piles in the laboratory, which will uh, give us the... the the truth, it's full-scale piles, full-scale on, on real sites. 
fully agree. People are, con uh, I think that people are inverting, uh, in other words, um, finite element predictions are a tool. The only way to have the tool functional is to calibrate. And to calibrate, you require full-scale tests. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps you understood the way I use the finite elements. I use the finite elements in elasticity, that's all, you know, in order to have uh, some, in order to look at the mechanisms. I use the finite elements for, to look at the basic mechanisms. And then uh, the, the real tool for engineers is these PY and TZ curves are sort of, uh, they are in between the uh, fundamental soil parameters, which uh, you should put in finite elements, uh, 3D analysis with sophisticated soil models, and between the, I would say, the final lens of the pile, which is uh, what you get on this, on this, uh, well, by using the beam theory, I didn't say it, but PY and TZ curves are used with the beam theory. So I like very much PY and TZ because they are a very practical tool for engineers uh, to, uh, to go from, uh, basic soil parameters to the actual uh, behavior of a pilot. Professor Savoycar, I see that Pedro Sequipinto yes. is in the yes, chat. Yes, Pedro, why don't you turn your camera on? Hello, uh, Pinto, sir. Hello, Professor Pinto. He sent me a message. He says, thanks for yes, yes. Yeah. your next lecture. Envoy a message up Pedro, can we see you? <laughs> Would you talk with us? It's gone. Where are you, Pedro? Lost in, oh, good. He raised his hand. Pedro, you're somewhere in the cyberspace, as we say. You're on mute, Pedro. 